how would you study if exercise, the benefits of exercise were a placebo, how would you even test that? The hotel workers study. <laughs> yeah, sure. I know you get asked these questions all the time, but I find these just these results also amazing. I think that this is a really good example of this phenomenon that the total effect of anything is a combined product of what you're doing and what you think about what you're doing. So this was a study that I ran with Ellen Langer way back when I was an undergrad, actually. We started this study. You know, I was an athlete at the time. I was an ice hockey player and I was training co constantly. And Ellen Langer's a professor of psychology at Harvard. You know, she actually was the one who said to me originally, you know the benefit of exercise is just a placebo, right? And I was like, well, that's outrageous. And that statement really got me thinking about that. So we designed this study together. Welcome to Brian and Paul. We just want to take a moment to thank all the recent viewers who have watched our recent videos and liked, commented, and subscribed in particular, because it truly is why we started this channel, to have a positive impact on people and to have a positive impact on our lives with the things that we're learning, doing, and attempting to implement, sometimes successfully, sometimes not, in our lives to make progress. So please just know from the bottom of our hearts, we sincerely thank you and we appreciate you. My name is Brian, and I'm really excited to bring this topic of mindset and exercise from this discussion between Andrew Huberman and Aaliyah Crum. The reason is that I started the habit series based on me trying to follow some of those protocols and tools that Andrew Huberman has provided. And out of the six areas to focus on for building new habits, fitness fell into two of those categories, movement and going to the gym as two separate activities. Part of the reason I look at that as two separate activities is this discussion from Aaliyah Crum. How would you study if exercise, the benefits of exercise were a placebo? How would you even test that? Because what does it mean to give a placebo exercise? So we sort of flipped it on its head and we found a group of people who were getting a lot of exercise, but weren't aware of it. So this, we settled on a group of hotel housekeepers. So these were women working in hotels who were on their feet all day long, pushing carts, changing linens, climbing stairs, cleaning bathrooms, vacuuming. It was clear that they were getting above and beyond at least the Surgeon General's requirements at that time, which were to accumulate 30 minutes of moderate physical activity per day. But what was interesting was when we went in and surveyed them and asked them, hey, how much exercise do you think you're getting? A third of them said zero. Like, I don't get any exercise. <laughs> and the average response was like a three on a scale of zero to 10. So it's clear that even though these women were active, they didn't have that mindset, right? They had the mindset that their work was just work hard, maybe thankless work that led them to feel tired and in pain at the end of the day, but not that it was good for them, that it was good exercise. So what we did was we took these women and we randomized them into two groups and we told half of them that their work was good exercise. This, in this case, it was true factual information. We oriented them to the Surgeon General's guidelines. We oriented them to the benefits that they should be receiving. And then we had measured them previously on their physiological metrics like weight and body fat and blood pressure. And we came back four weeks later and we tested them again. And what we found was that these women, even though they hadn't changed anything in their behavior, at least that was detectable to us, they didn't work more rooms, they didn't start doing pull-ups or push-ups in between cleaning hotel rooms as far as I'm concerned, they didn't report any changes in their diet, but they had benefits to their health. So they lost weight. They decreased their systolic blood pressure by about 10 points on average. And they started feeling better <laughs> about themselves, them, their bodies, and, and their work, not surprisingly. That's amazing. How should we conceptualize that result in light of all of our efforts to get more out of exercise? My current understanding of the literature is that getting somewhere between 150 and 180 minutes per week of cardiovascular exercise is probably a good idea for most people. If I tell myself that it's not just a good idea, but that it's extremely effective in lowering my blood pressure and maintaining healthy weight, et cetera, et cetera, according to these results, it will have an, an enhanced effect on those metrics. Is that right? This is a really important point because what this reveals is that we have to be more thoughtful in how we go about 
motivating people to exercise or teaching people about the benefits. Our current approach is just to basically tell people, here's what you need to get to get enough exercise to receive the health benefits. The problem with that approach is that most people aren't meeting those benefits yet or aren't meeting those requirements mm -hmm. yet. The intention with that is to motivate them. Public health officials think, well, if I just tell people you need to get more exercise because it's good for you, they'll do it. We know now that that doesn't work, that these, these guidelines are not motivational. They don't change our behavior. And what our work adds to that is that not only is it not motivational, it also creates potentially a mindset that makes people worse off <laughs> than they were without knowing about the guidelines. So again, it's tricky. I'm not saying that mindset is everything. Certainly exercise is good for us and helpful for us. It's one of the things we have the best data on. So I'm not saying, oh, exercise is all a placebo. What I am saying is that we need to be more mindful about how do we motivate people to exercise, but how do we help people to actually reap the benefits of the exercise they are already doing? I think that this will also help you as you think about a different mindset towards not just the direct exercise activities that you do, but also the activities that you do in your life that may allow you to get out of a potentially sedentary lifestyle. These will allow us to be able to improve and make progress in terms of how our mindset shifts, because this next point is critically important when you realize the impact of answering this important question of getting enough compared to other people. Now, Octavia Zart, who is a grad student in my lab, ran a number of interesting studies along these lines. One in which she looked at three nationally representative data sets, which had this interesting question in them, which was, how much exercise do you get relative to others? Do you get about the same, a little more, a lot more? Do you get a little less or a lot less, right? And then in these data sets, what she did was she had, you know, pulled from data that tracked death rates over the next 21 years. And a couple interesting things revealed themselves. One was that the correlations between these perceptions of exercise relative to others and people's actual exercise as measured through um, accelerometer uh, data, as well as more rigorous sort of what did you do today kind of data, those don't correlate much at all. People lie. <laughs> well, people lie, but or also misperceive. they misperceive. Or who's to say it's misperceiving? Everything's relative. I used to do triathlons very seriously. So if you were to ask me now, I feel like I'm totally inactive, right? Because I'm not doing anything near what I used to. And, and if that's my focus set, <laughs> right, I feel like I'm not exercising much. But if I think about compared to other people, given what I know about national representative statistics, then I could feel like, oh, I'm getting a lot. So you can see right. how these perceptions are decoupled from objective reality. And what we found in these studies is that one question mattered, in some cases more than objective activity, but in all cases, controlling for objective activity and predicting death rates. In one of the samples, it was a 71% higher risk of death rate if people rated themselves as feeling like they were getting less activity than others. Wow. So, that's yeah. A big, that's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. And again, you know, that study is cross-sectional, longitudinal. It was not experimental. But combined, you know, these really sort of coalesced to say, hey, this is important too. Let's figure out ways to be active and get people active, but let's also not make people feel horrible about themselves when they're not getting enough. And going back to the hotel study, again, I mentioned that I did that at a time when I was a Division I ice hockey player at the time. We were training all the time, and I, I was in an unhealthy mindset about that. I never felt like I was getting enough. I would come off a two-hour practice into a weightlifting session, and then I would get on the elliptical for 30 minutes because I thought I had to do that also. <laughs> you know, my, my teammates who were with me at the time could attest to that. And so that study was really helpful for me to realize that I needed to pay attention not just to what I was doing, but also take care of my mindset about that. And I think the essence is how do you get people to feel like they're getting enough? It's a sense of enoughness that really matters. Yeah, I can see the dilemma because you, you don't want people thinking that exercise and its positive effects are so potent that they can get away with a three minute walk each day and that they're good right. because most likely they are not. But again, you don't want them to be so back on their heels psychologically that they 
don't even do that or that they never exceed that by very much. But it seems like the, the message from the milkshake study and what we're talking about now in terms of exercise would be that exercise has a remarkable potency and that that potency can be enhanced yeah. by believing in or understanding that potency. That's exactly right. Yeah. What is the right way to cultivate both behaviors and mindsets about those behaviors that serve us? I truly appreciate Andrew Humerman and Aaliyah Krum providing this because when we think about how often we may be comparing what we do to others, we forget that life is really just a race with ourselves. And we're the ones that we need to compete against just us. Because the reality is, yes, I get competition, I get winning championships and all the other things that we can do to be successful in our lives and how that can make us feel great and provide us the dopamine. Yet when we have a mindset that is saying that we're not getting enough to have a potential 71% increase in mortality rate is huge when we're comparing ourselves to others based off of what we think other people are doing. It's a crazy, crazy concept that was eye-opening for me. And I think also will benefit you as you look at the activities that you do, whether it's that short walk or long walk after a meal or dinner, or whether it is standing up and doing those dishes or bending down and cleaning the floor, or scrubbing the toilet, whatever it is, being out in the garden. So the idea again here is this, from my perspective, that we need a positive mindset, not as a, yay, let's go out and be winners, but in a recognition that the energy and effort we're outputting in life to make progress truly has benefit as long as we see it that way. So I don't want to get into the dreamer aspect of it, but the reality is all of these mindset discussions that we're reviewing in these episodes are truly allowing an impact in terms of not just how it makes our minds think differently or how we feel differently about it with our emotions, but how our bodies actually respond similar to the placebo effect and the nocebo effect. And when I discussed those personal examples in the previous video. So if you've enjoyed the video, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel, commenting on what your mindset is towards exercise. And if this has helped you understand and shift and see things in a different way. Thank you for watching. Have a fabulous day.